Listen and practice. Well, on weekdays, I get up at 6.45. I have breakfast at 7 o'clock, and I go to school at 7.30. I have lunch at school with my friends. That's at 12.15. It's early in our school. I leave school at 2.30 in the afternoon, and I walk home with my friends. I get home at 3.30, have soda, maybe pizza, and watch television. I go to bed at 11 o'clock on weekdays, but later on the weekend, of course. Listen and practice. My name is Mike. I'm from the U.S., but I moved to Hungary two years ago. I left home because I got a job in Budapest. I teach science at a university. Six months ago, I met a beautiful woman named Maria. Maria grew up in Budapest, but she went to college in the States. It was very surprising to meet someone who spoke my language so well. We began to go out, and we fell in love. Two weeks ago, on a Saturday night, I asked Maria to marry me. She was surprised, but she said yes. Now we are engaged. Two years ago, I came to Hungary for a job. Now I'm staying because I met Maria. Isn't life interesting? Listen and practice. Perry and Lily are brother and sister. They are from the same family, but they are very different. Perry likes reading books, but he doesn't like watching TV. Lily watches TV every night, but she doesn't like reading books. She reads the newspaper. Perry likes Chinese food, and he drinks a lot of coffee. Lily drinks tea, and she doesn't like Chinese food. She eats a lot of Mexican food. Perry likes listening to classical music. Lily listens to jazz. She likes playing jazz piano. Perry and Lily are very different, but they feel the same about one thing. They're happy to be brother and sister. Listen and practice. Phil Johnson is 23 years old. He's a bus driver and a student. He is very busy. On weekdays, he gets up at 6 o'clock in the morning and goes to work at 6.30. He usually has breakfast in the car. He works all day. He always has lunch from 12 to 12.30 in the afternoon. He usually buys a sandwich in the center of town. He leaves work at 4 in the afternoon and goes to school. He has school from 5 to 8 p.m. He gets home at 8.30 in the evening, and then he has dinner and does homework. He goes to bed at 11. Listen and practice. People have very different ideas for their dream home, their perfect house or apartment. Some people dream of a simple house in a special place. Others want a large house with every convenience. Henry David Thoreau
an American writer, lived from 1817 to 1862. At the age of 28, he built his perfect house. It was a very small house, just 10 feet by 15 feet, 3 meters by 4.5 meters. Inside, there were just three chairs, a bed, a table, and a small desk. The location of his house was very important to Thoreau. He built his house in the woods close to a beautiful lake. Listen and practice. Dikembe Mutombo, a professional basketball player, built a very different type of dream home. Mutombo grew up in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, but he moved to the United States to study. He wanted to be a doctor, but instead he became a famous basketball player. Mutombo's dream home is in the Congo, and it has beds for 150 people. It also has an emergency room, many exam rooms, and some beautiful gardens. Mutombo didn't build his dream home for himself. Instead, he built it for the people in his native country. Mutombo's dream home is a hospital. Listen and practice. I used to live in a nice apartment downtown, in a pretty interesting neighborhood. But the thing was, they wouldn't let you keep a pet. I really wanted to get a cat, so I moved to a place where you could keep pets. Now I live in a building near the park, and there's two of us, me and my cat Felix. We play all the time. Listen and practice. We used to have a nice apartment downtown. It had great views of the city. But then these new people moved in upstairs. They played loud music all the time, and the sound came straight through the ceiling and into our apartment. It was terrible, so we moved. Now we're living in a nice small house in the suburbs, and our neighbors are very quiet. Listen and practice. My new apartment is on a high floor and it's great. There's no noise at all. I only hear the birds in the park. Before that, I lived in a first floor apartment. It had a little yard, which was nice. But I heard people coming and going all the time. And it was close to the street, so I heard all the traffic too. Listen and practice. We didn't really want to move because we loved our apartment. We had a wonderful landlady too. She didn't raise the rent for years, and if anything was broken, she would get it fixed really fast. But with the children getting older, we needed to be closer to a good school. So that's why we moved. Now we live in an apartment in the suburbs. Listen and practice. My new apartment has a huge kitchen and a great stove. I'm really happy about it. I love to cook and have parties, but the kitchen in my old place was so tiny. And the dining room was small too. The location was good, but I could never have people over for dinner, so I needed to find something different. Listen and practice. It's a great place to stay. The atmosphere is so glamorous and exciting. There are bright lights at the front door and people always arrive in really expensive cars. The rooms are really beautiful too. Of course, it's not the cheapest hotel in Miami, but it's definitely the best.
Listen and practice. I'm reading a story about a parrot that saved two people's lives. A man and his son fell asleep on the couch watching a movie. While they were sleeping, their house caught on fire. They woke up suddenly when they heard their parrot imitating a smoke alarm. Apparently, their smoke alarm did go off, but it wasn't loud enough to wake them up. Listen and practice. Wow, did you hear about the twin sisters that were separated at birth? They were adopted by different families when they were babies and grew up in different cities. But after high school, they both attended the same college. They figured out they were twins. They were even in the same class. Listen and practice. Earth's crust. Earth is round, like an orange. Oranges have a skin, and Earth has a skin too. We call this skin Earth's crust. Under the crust, there is very hot rock. Earth's crust has different pieces. These pieces move very, very slowly. Millions of years ago, the pieces moved and made mountains. Under mountains, the crust is thick, but under the ocean, it's thinner. When two pieces of the crust move and meet, there can be earthquakes. Listen and practice. A volcano is a hole in Earth's crust. When a volcano erupts, hot rock flies out from under the ground, and melted rock pours out over the ground. Volcanoes under the ocean sometimes make new islands. In 1963, a volcano in the Atlantic Ocean made a new island called Surtsey. There are many different rocks in Earth's crust. They are millions of years old. The rocks are often different colors. In the painted desert in Arizona, in the USA, you can see the different rocks. Listen and practice. You can't please everyone. One day, Nasruddin wanted to take his young son into town. You can ride the donkey, he told his son, and I'll walk next to you. So, Nasruddin's son got on the donkey. And they started down the road into town. A little while later, Nasruddin and his son came across some people on the road. The people looked at the boy on the donkey with disapproval. One person said, "Look at that healthy young boy! Can you believe today's young people? They have no respect for their parents. That boy rides on the donkey, and his poor father has to walk." When the boy heard this, he was very unhappy. He asked his father to ride the donkey instead of him. So, Nasruddin got on the donkey, and the boy walked next to him. Soon, they met another group of people on the road. One person said, "Well, look at that! That poor boy has to walk while his father rides the donkey." After the people walked away, Nasruddin told his son to get on the donkey with him. No one can criticize us now, he said. But soon they met two old men on the road. The men looked at Nasruddin and his son with disapproval. 
That poor donkey looks very tired, one of the men said. Nasruddin stopped the donkey and got off. Then he said to his son, The best thing is for both of us to walk. Then no one can criticize us. So Nasruddin and his son walked down the road and the donkey walked behind them. Soon they met some more people on the road. One person said, Just look at those fools. Both of them are walking in this hot weather and no one is riding the donkey. How stupid they are. Nasruddin looked at his son and said, You can't please everyone. Listen and practice. I have a great job. I study crocodiles. It's an important job. Let me explain why. Here in Australia, we have a lot of crocodiles, but sometimes the crocodiles are sick. I want to know why. I study the food the crocodiles eat. I also learn how fast they grow and where they live. How do I do this? Well, in the morning, I take my camera and I watch the crocodiles in the river. I take photos. Sometimes the crocodiles eat toads. Some toads make them sick and they die. I want to help the crocodiles. Listen and practice. Ice cream flavor expert. Believe it or not, I taste ice cream for my job. Yes, it's a dream job, but it's also difficult. I work at a big ice cream company. Every day, I taste lots of different flavors three times each. Why is that? Well, I taste a little of the ice cream we make in the morning, afternoon, and at night. That way, I know that all the ice cream is good. I use my eyes first. Does the ice cream look nice? Then I taste the ice cream with a spoon. Does it taste fresh and sweet? Then I spit it out. Yes, I really spit it out. Listen and practice. A young man in Illinois was having trouble paying his college tuition, so he came up with quite a creative solution. He wrote to a newspaper columnist and asked him to print a request in his column. He wanted the columnist to ask readers to send in one penny to help him pay for his college education. Readers of the newspaper thought it was a funny idea, so they sent in their pennies, and in the end, the young man collected $28,000. Last summer, I flew from London to Casablanca in Morocco to do some research on the traditional music there. Unfortunately, my bags didn't arrive with the flight. I thought they would probably arrive on the next flight, but they didn't. I had nothing to wear except the clothes I had on. Luckily, the airline gave me some money to buy some extra clothes and things. The bags didn't turn up till four days later. I was really glad to get my bags back because I had a lot of important stuff inside them. But I had to wait around until they turned up. So I didn't get a chance to listen to any of the traditional music. That's why I want to get back there again sometime. Listen and practice. 
A city without oil. The United Arab Emirates, UAE, is a country with a lot of oil. Oil brings the country billions of dollars each year. So why is the UAE building a city that uses very little or no oil? The answer is simple. Oil will not last forever. But there is another resource people can use instead of oil. The sun. In fact, engineers are now building a new city that uses mostly solar energy for its power. The city is called Mazdar. And it is about 20 miles, 32 kilometers from Abu Dhabi, one of the largest cities in the UAE. If it is a success, Mazdar will be the first city in the world that uses little or no oil. Listen and practice. Emergency in the air. On April 28, 1988, at 1.25 p.m., Flight 243 left Hilo, Hawaii. It was a 40-minute flight to Honolulu, and the weather was good. The 89 passengers were in their seats with their seatbelts on. At 1.40, the plane reached 24,000 feet, and the three flight attendants started serving drinks. Suddenly, at 1.45, there was a loud noise. Mr. Denon, a businessman, was in a window seat in the back of the airplane. He looked at the front of the airplane and saw a big hole. A third of the roof was gone, Mr. Denon said. I saw blue sky. David Kupahea was in a seat in the front of the airplane. His suitcase was under the seat in front of him. Suddenly, the suitcase flew out of the airplane. Then, a piece of metal hit his arm and cut it. The passenger next to him had a large cut on his head. Everything was flying around. Books, paper, money, said passenger Stanford Sampson. When the pilot heard the noise, he looked back. The cockpit door wasn't there, and he saw blue sky above the passengers. The first 18 feet, 5.5 meters, of the airplane behind the cockpit were completely open. Only the floor and the passenger seats were still there. The pilot decided to put the airplane into a fast descent. They were close to the airport on the island of Maui, and maybe he could land the airplane there. At 1.58 p.m., the pilot made an emergency landing at Kahului Airport in Maui. The passengers couldn't believe it. They were safe on the ground. What caused the emergency? It was an old plane. It made many short flights during its life. It took off and landed many times, and this weakened the plane. Listen and practice. Everyday life. Well, I'm pretty busy. I get up early and check my email. I listen to the radio. I don't watch TV on weekdays. Then I study. It's crazy. We get up late, so I eat breakfast in the car. My husband doesn't have breakfast. Well, 
My wife and I read the newspaper. I have breakfast, and my wife has coffee. We're pretty quiet. We don't talk a lot. I try to study, but my brother and sister make a lot of noise. They don't care. My sister watches TV, and my brother plays games on the computer. Listen and practice. Party planning. Hi, Adam. Grandpa's birthday is in two weeks. I'd like to plan a big birthday party. I'd like to make it special because he is turning 80 years old. I will be very busy planning. Do you want to help me? We can have the party in the park. We can bring tables and chairs. We can also bring balloons to decorate the party. I'd like to invite 28 guests. I have made a list of their names. Five people can sit at one table, so we need six tables. I will order pizza. One pizza has 10 pieces. Each person can have two pieces. That means we need 56 pieces. I will order six pizzas. I will buy juice. One bottle is one liter. Each person probably drinks 250 milliliters. That means one bottle for four people. So I need to buy seven bottles. David will get our favorite bakery to bake a special birthday cake. We can cut one cake into eight pieces. How many cakes do you think we need? Four or five cakes? Check out the attachments. These are some of my ideas. Email me back. Rita Listen and practice. Every day, people throw away millions of products like toys, cans, and bottles. Most waste goes to landfills, and sometimes people throw waste in other places, like rivers. This is bad for our world. It's good to recycle old products. We can use materials from old products to make new things, we can recycle old products like plastic bottles, metal cans, and clothes. At recycling centers, people sort the old products. Then machines use the old products to make recycled materials. We can use these materials to make new products. Listen and practice. Stonehenge The Stonehenge stone circles are in England. People transported the first stones to this place about 5,000 years ago. We don't know a lot about Stonehenge. Who built it? How did they build it? Why did they build it? It's a mystery. People built Stonehenge with blue stones and sarsen stones. There were about 80 blue stones. They came from mountains 250 kilometers away. They are very heavy. Some weigh about four metric tons. The biggest sarsen stone weighs about 45 metric tons. 
That's like ten elephants. The sarsen stones are even bigger and heavier. About four thousand years ago, people transported them from thirty kilometers away. How did people use Stonehenge? Maybe they used it as a cemetery, or a place for studying the sun and the stars. Maybe it was also a temple. It's still a special place for some people today. Every year on June twenty-first, lots of people go to Stonehenge to celebrate the longest day of the year. Listen and practice. Welcome to South America. South America is one of the seven continents on our planet. It is the fourth largest continent. The Atlantic Ocean is to the east of South America, and the Pacific Ocean is to the west. Most of South America is in the Southern Hemisphere. Spring and summer are from September to February. Fall and winter are from March to August. The landscape of South America is diverse. Most people know about the Amazon rainforest, but there are also flat grasslands and soft wetlands. There are also many mountains and deserts. The Amazon River is the world's second longest river. It runs through Brazil, Venezuela, Colombia, Peru, Bolivia, and Ecuador. It is six thousand eight hundred forty kilometers long. The Andes is the longest mountain range in the world. It is located on the west of South America. It stretches from north to south. The highest point is Mount Aconcagua in Argentina. It is six thousand nine hundred sixty-two meters high. The Atacama Desert is the second driest place on the planet. It only gets one millimeter of rain each year. It is located in northern Chile. Listen and practice. What are the smallest living things on Earth? The answer is cells. Some of the biggest living things, like whales. People or trees are made of millions of tiny cells. Microbes are living things that usually have just one cell. Most cells are too small to see. So how do people know that living things are made of cells? No one knew about cells until microscopes were invented. Microscopes magnify tiny things like cells to make them look bigger, so that people can see them. Listen and practice. In 1665, a British scientist called Robert Hooke made one of the first microscopes. He used it to look at a thin piece of tree bark called cork. He saw that the cork was made of lots of tiny pieces. These were the cork cells. Today, microscopes can magnify things a million times. When Robert Hooke saw the pieces inside the cork, he called them cells because they looked like little rooms called cells. Listen and practice. I have to wear a suit and tie to work. After work, I just want to go home and put on jeans and an old sweater. You know, something comfortable. Listen and practice. Well, my boss likes to wear designer clothes, so I need to look good too. I usually wear a nice skirt or dressy pants with a silk blouse, and a jacket. Oh, 
and high heels. Listen and practice. Well, we don't have to wear uniforms at our school, so I like to wear pants, a t-shirt, and sneakers. So yeah, I'm lucky. My friend has to wear a uniform, and she hates it. Listen and practice. Our solar system. Space is everything that's around planet Earth, and it's bigger than we can imagine. When you look at the sky at night, you can see thousands of stars. Did you know that the sun is a star, too? There are also billions of other stars in space and billions of planets. Stars are huge balls of hot gas. A star with planets around it is called a solar system. Our sun has eight planets. This is our solar system. Groups of stars are called galaxies. Each galaxy has billions of stars. Our solar system is in a galaxy called the Milky Way that has 200 billion stars. There are billions of other galaxies in the universe. Listen and practice. Our amazing sun. The sun and all other stars are made of two gases called hydrogen and helium. The hydrogen changes into helium in a process called nuclear fusion. This process produces heat and light. Our sun is about 150 million kilometers away from Earth, but it's hot enough to burn you at the beach. Plants on Earth use energy from the sun to grow. Animals and people also get their energy from the sun because they eat plants. Listen and practice. Earth and the Sun A planet goes around, or orbits, a star. It takes our planet Earth one year to orbit the Sun. A planet also turns on its axis. It takes Earth 24 hours to do a complete turn on its axis. When a place on Earth is opposite the sun, it's daytime in that place. Listen and practice. University admissions around the world. What do you need to do to get into a university? Actually, it depends on where you live. Let's look at university admissions in four countries. Austria, Turkey, the United Kingdom, and the United States. In Austria. In Austria, Getting into a university is very simple. Getting into a university in Austria depends completely on a student's score on a national achievement exam. Subjects on this exam include German, mathematics, and a foreign language. Students who pass this exam can go to a university in Austria.
in Turkey. In Turkey, high school students take a national achievement exam in March. If they pass that exam, they take another exam in June. Getting into a Turkish university depends mostly on these exam scores, but universities also consider high school grades. In Turkey, students usually study very hard for the national exam. If they don't pass the exam, they can't go to university. In the United Kingdom, Students in the United Kingdom take achievement exams when they are 16, 17, and 18 years old. Universities consider a student's scores on all of these exams. Students also provide a very short personal statement, a reference letter from one teacher, and information about their extracurricular activities. In the United States, the university admission system in the United States is quite different from those in Austria, Turkey, and the UK. Most universities in the United States consider a student's score on a special aptitude test called the SAT. Unlike an achievement exam, an aptitude test measures a student's ability to learn. It does not measure a student's knowledge of school subjects. Most universities also look at a student's high school grades, an admissions essay, and several reference letters. Extracurricular activities, such as sports, clubs, and volunteer work, are also very important. Students often do many activities in high school so they can get into a good university. Listen and practice. When I went to Hawaii, I spent the first few days in Honolulu. Everything was really expensive there, especially in the restaurants. Four dollars for a soda. But the beaches were wonderful. The sand was so soft and the water was so clean. Listen and practice. Sydney is one of my favorite cities in Australia. There are some great buildings there, like the famous Opera House. The only problem is the weather. Spring and fall are okay, but the summer is too hot for me. Listen and practice. One of my favorite cities is New York. There's so much culture there. I spent two weeks there last summer, and every day I went to a different museum, play, musical performance, or poetry reading. The only thing I don't like about New York is the traffic noise. You can hear cars driving and honking all night long. Listen and practice. Vancouver is a nice city to visit, but don't go in the winter. It's much too cold. The rest of the year is great, though, and there are plenty of clubs, restaurants, and other places to go at night. Listen and practice. I used to eat out a lot, but I don't eat out much anymore. All the good and expensive places near my apartment have moved or gone out of business. Now there are only really expensive restaurants in my neighborhood. It's really too bad. Listen and practice. In Los Angeles, you have to drive everywhere. And sometimes the traffic is terrible. But that's the only bad part. There are a lot of fun things to see, like Hollywood, Disneyland, museums, and movie studios.
Listen and practice. I think Rio de Janeiro is one of the most interesting cities in South America. The nightlife is great. They have great musicians, so there's always good music in the cafes. Crime is a problem, though, so you have to be careful. Listen and practice. My trip to Cancun this summer was great. The thing I liked most was going snorkeling at the beach. The water was crystal clear and full of the most beautiful tropical fish I've ever seen. I'll never forget it. Unfortunately, though, I spent too much time in the sun, and I got the worst sunburn of my life. I had to go to the doctor to get a cream for it. Next time I go, I'll use sunscreen every day. Listen and practice. One day, a rich dad took his son on a trip to a village. He wanted to show him how poor someone can be. They spent time in a farm of a poor family. On their return from the trip, the father asked his son, How was the trip? It was great, Dad. Did you see how poor people live? The father asked. Oh, yes, said the son. So tell me, what did you learn from the trip? asked the father. The son answered, We have one dog, they have four. We have a pool. They have rivers. We have lights at night. They have stars. We buy foods. They grow theirs. We have walls to protect us. They have friends. We have television. They spend time with family and relatives. The boy's father was speechless. Then his son added, Thanks, Dad, for showing me how poor we are. Listen and practice. I went to Mexico City for the first time last summer, and I managed to use my Spanish every day. I mean, I still had to look up words a lot, but I was really proud of myself. The only bad experience I had there was when someone stole my purse while I was having lunch in a restaurant. Next time, I'll watch my purse more carefully. Listen and practice. I really enjoyed my visit to London. I wish I could have stayed there for a month instead of just for a week. The thing I really enjoyed most was the British theater. I went almost every night and saw some really famous actors. Unfortunately, I didn't realize how expensive London can be. I spent twice as much money as I had planned to. Listen and practice. You wouldn't believe what happened on my vacation to Bangkok. I lost my wallet in the taxi. I thought I would never see it again. But that evening, the taxi driver came to my hotel and gave my wallet back to me. I was so relieved. The last day I was there, though, I got food poisoning from some fish I had at a restaurant near my hotel. Next time, I'll eat at a different seafood restaurant. Listen and practice. It used to take me about an hour to get to the airport. But now it takes me more than two hours. There's so much traffic here these days. Listen and practice. October 31st is Halloween. Children wear costumes. In the evening, they knock on doors 
and people give them candy. At Halloween, some people buy a pumpkin. They cut holes in the pumpkin to make eyes, a nose, and a mouth. They put a candle in the pumpkin to make a lantern. A lantern and a scary face. Stores sell Halloween toys, like skeletons and spiders. People aren't really scared at Halloween. It's fun. Listen and practice. New Year. All around the world, there are big festivals for New Year. People in different countries do different things. In Spain and Portugal, people eat twelve grapes at midnight on December thirty-first. In Japan, people like laughing at midnight. They say, "Start the year with a laugh." Then all the year is happy. In Thailand, people throw water in the streets. They have water all over them, but it's not a problem. The weather in Thailand is always hot at New Year. At New Year, many people watch fireworks. Little children sit on their mother's or father's shoulders, so that they can see the fireworks. The fireworks go up, and all the people say, "Happy New Year!" Listen and practice. The rise of e-books. E-book means electronic book. You can use a device called an e-book reader to read e-books. E-books are popular for many reasons. First, they are cheaper. On average, e-books are about eight percent cheaper than paper books. Second, they are faster and easier to buy. You don't have to go to a bookstore. You can pay for and download the books from the internet. Third. You can carry e-books easily. An e-reader can hold thousands of e-books and remain thin and light. Finally, an e-book is comfortable to read. You can change the size of the text. You can also change the brightness of the screen. Listen and practice. So on Saturday morning, I did chores at home, you know, laundry and stuff. Then I went grocery shopping because, well, because there was no food in the house. Sunday morning, I fixed my bike, walked the dog, called my mom, and made lunch. Then I wrote a report for work, cleaned the house, and went to bed. Listen and practice. Wow, what an awesome weekend! I went running in the park on Saturday evening, and I met someone I knew from school ten years ago. It was so cool. Her name is Marie, and we always hung out together when we were kids. She's married now and has a baby. Listen and practice. I just had the worst weekend ever. It was my best friend Pete's wedding, and my car broke down on the drive. I was on a quiet road, and suddenly there was a bang. 
Then the car just didn't move. I missed the wedding and came home on the back of a truck. Listen and practice. Hey guys, guess what? I just got back from my first ever parasailing class. It was amazing. I traveled to a town by the ocean and met my instructor. We went high up above the ocean where people jump off the rocks. It was kind of scary, but so exciting. Here's a picture of me. See? That's me. Listen and practice. I had a part-time job in a restaurant. I was a server. I was young, only 16. I remember that on my first day, things were really busy, and I was very nervous. I made a lot of embarrassing mistakes, and my boss wasn't too pleased. Listen and practice. It's my birthday next Wednesday. I'm going to be 10 years old. In my country, we always eat fairy bread on our birthdays. My mom's going to make me a huge plate of fairy bread. It's a snack. We make it with bread, butter, and colorful sugar called hundreds and thousands. Listen and practice. I love birthdays. They're a lot of fun. Here in Jamaica, we have an old custom. We like to surprise people on their birthday. Guess what we do? We throw flour at our friends. It's my best friend's birthday tomorrow. I'm going to go to the store soon. I'm going to buy a lot of flour to throw at him. Listen and practice. My grandmother is going to be 100 years old in June. She's very excited because she's going to get a special letter from the Queen. The Queen sends a letter to every person who reaches 100. It's a tradition that makes people very happy. In my country, we celebrate birthdays with a special type of food. Noodles are a sign of long life for us. This year, I'm going to make some long life noodles for all my friends. We're going to eat them together and have a great evening. Listen and practice. Facebook is a free social networking site on the Internet. It was created by three computer science majors at Harvard University. At first, it was limited to students at Harvard, but eventually it was opened up to the general public. Today, Facebook is used all over the world and by all age groups, although users must be at least 13 years old. Even though Facebook was originally designed for university-aged students, the fastest-growing Facebook age group is between the ages of 30 and 50. Listen and practice. My name is Melissa, and I was born in 1984 in Canada, but I didn't grow up there. My family moved to the United States in 1986, so I really grew up here in America. I went to school and college here, and I became a tour guide in 2004. I give tours to Canada.
Listen and practice. I'm Colin. I grew up here in the UK, and I still live here now, but I wasn't born here. I was born in South Africa in 2000. My parents moved to the UK in 2002, so I went with them, of course. I'm a student, and I'm going to be a doctor someday. Ice cream. About 2,000 years ago, the ancient Romans brought ice and snow from the mountains and mixed it with fruit and honey. About 1,500 years ago, people in China made desserts with ice and milk. The soft ice cream that we eat today was probably invented in Europe about 400 years ago. Fruit ices were popular in Europe. Then people started to add cream. They put the cream in a metal bowl with sugar. Then they froze it in a bucket of ice. This was hard work because they had to keep mixing the cream by hand. In 1843, an American woman named Nancy Johnson invented an ice cream machine. Seven years later, the first ice cream factory opened in Baltimore in the USA. Listen and practice. What are ecosystems? There are millions of living things on Earth from the smallest plants to enormous whales. These plants and animals live in different places, like oceans, rainforests, and deserts. These different places and all the things that live in them are called ecosystems. In an ecosystem, there are living things, like plants and animals, and things that are not living, like rocks, water, and air. Together, these things make an ecosystem. The different parts of an ecosystem work together and use each other. For example, in a garden ecosystem, plants use the land, water, light, and air to live. Bees visit plants to drink nectar from their flowers. When bees do this, they also take pollen from one plant to another. Pollen helps flowers to make seeds that can become new plants. Listen and practice. Potato chips. In 1853, George Crumb was a cook in a restaurant in Saratoga Springs in New York. One day, a customer said he didn't like George's french fries. He said they were too thick. So George played a joke on the customer. He made some french fries that were very thin, like paper. The customer loved them. Soon, all of George's customers wanted thin French fries. George called them Saratoga chips. In 1860, George opened a new restaurant, and his thin chips became famous all over the USA. Today, potato chips are one of the most popular snacks in the world. In the United Kingdom, French fries are called chips, and potato chips are called crisps. Listen and practice. Do you see clouds in the sky where you live? Some clouds are gray, and some clouds are white. Gray clouds 
have many raindrops. White clouds don't have many raindrops. When it's cloudy, big clouds stop some light from the sun coming to Earth. Cumulonimbus clouds are very, very big. When you see this type of cloud, get your umbrella. Cumulonimbus clouds have lots and lots of raindrops, and they make very big storms. Cumulonimbus clouds can make lightning. Lightning is very, very hot. Listen and practice. When it's very cold in the sky, water in clouds is ice. Some ice falls to earth. When it falls, the ice is snow. When snow falls on warm ground, the snow melts. Then the snow is water again. Some water goes into the ground, and it helps plants to grow. Some water goes into rivers. When snow falls on cold ground, it's white everywhere. When lots of snow falls on mountains, people can go skiing. When lots of snow falls on houses and streets, people can't drive their cars. Then they can't go to school or work. Listen and practice. Molly Jones. Molly Jones is 25 and she's an artist. She lives in a small house by the ocean in Cape Cod, Massachusetts, near Boston. She always gets up late at 10 o'clock in the morning. She has a big breakfast, coffee, eggs, and toast. And then she goes to the beach with her dog. When she gets home, she works in her studio until 7 o'clock in the evening. She never eats lunch, but she always cooks a big dinner, and she often invites friends. After dinner, she usually listens to music or plays the piano. Sometimes she calls her brother, Luke, in New York. She goes to bed very late, at 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning. Listen and practice. Yesterday was Sunday, so I got up late, about 11.30. I had a big breakfast, orange juice, toast, eggs, and coffee. Then I went shopping, just to the supermarket, and I bought some tea, some milk, and the Sunday paper. Then I just stayed home for the rest of the day. In the afternoon, I cleaned my house, and then I did some work on my computer for a bit. Then in the evening, I watched a movie on TV. I went to bed early, about 10 o'clock. Listen and practice. He gets up at 6 o'clock and he takes a shower. He has breakfast at 6.45. He leaves home at 7.15 and he goes to work by taxi. He has lunch 
a soda and a sandwich in his office at one o'clock. He always works late. He leaves work at eight o'clock in the evening. He sometimes buys a pizza and eats it at home. He gets home at 9.15. He never goes out in the evening. He works at his computer from 9.30 to 11.30. He always goes to bed at 11.45. He watches television in bed. Listen and practice. Last summer, I went on vacation to Argentina. I went with my brother Josh. We had a great time. It was summer in the U.S., but winter in Argentina. So we brought lots of warm clothes. We loved Buenos Aires. It's a fantastic city. We saw a tango dancing show and went to the market on Sunday. We also visited many museums and ate a lot of meat. The restaurants were great. Then we went to Mendoza. We went skiing in the Andes Mountains and saw Mount Aconcagua, the tallest mountain in North and South America. It was amazing. Listen and practice. Hello. My name is Daniela Delgado. I'm from Brazil. This is a photo of my family. Our house is in Sao Paulo. This is my sister. Her name is Isabella, and she's 24. She's a nurse. This is my brother. His name is Davi, and he's 29. He's a businessman. This is my mother. Her name is Adriana, and she's 54. She's a sales assistant. This is my father. His name is Alonzo, and he's 60. He's a doctor. My family is fantastic. Listen and practice. I think I need a new job. My boss criticizes me about my work all the time. He even accused me of taking ideas from my coworkers. My coworker Bob discussed my ideas with our boss, and he told my boss they were his ideas. I don't discuss my ideas with anyone now. People in the office gossip all the time, too. They whisper when the boss or any of the managers walk by. I complained to Human Resources, but they said they couldn't do anything. The manager suggested I apply for a job in another office in the next town. She promised to recommend me to the manager there. Listen and practice. People enjoy making fun of my phobia. I'm afraid of snakes. I think my phobia surprises people because I'm a big guy. But if I see a snake or even a picture of a snake, I just freak out. And I can't imagine being in the same room as a snake. Last year, one of my co-workers put a picture of a snake on my computer. I didn't see the picture when I first walked to my desk, but then I turned to use my computer and I saw it. I remember suddenly feeling really sick. I tried to run, but my feet wouldn't move. I tried to scream, but there was no sound. My co-workers all knew about the joke 
but they quickly started to feel like it wasn't a joke to me. Bill managed to get the picture off my computer, and Cynthia offered to take me on a walk. My coworkers promised never to scare me like that again. Big guys get scared too. Listen and practice. Do you know the sun makes wind? Wind is air that moves. In the sky, there's air. The sun makes the air warm. Warm air goes up into the sky. In the sky, it's very cold, so the air gets cold. When the air is cold, it goes down again. Wind blows. A breeze is wind that blows slowly. A breeze can blow flags in the sky. Some winds blow fast. A hurricane is wind that blows very fast. When there's a hurricane, people are scared. A hurricane can blow down trees and houses. Listen and practice. When it's sunny, people can get hot. Many buildings have windows with shutters. When it's sunny, the shutters stop the heat and light going in the buildings. Then people in the buildings don't get hot. When it's sunny, many people wear a hat. Then their head doesn't get hot. When it's rainy, people can get wet. Buildings have roofs. The rain falls off the roofs, and it doesn't go in the buildings. Then people in the buildings don't get wet. When it's rainy, many people use an umbrella. Then they don't get wet. What do you do when it's rainy and when it's sunny? Listen and practice. In the Arctic and the Antarctic, it's very cold and dry. A lot of the water is ice or snow. There are no trees. Plants can't grow in these places. There's white ice and snow everywhere. There aren't many animals in the Arctic and the Antarctic. There are no leaves, fruit, or nuts for animals to eat. Seals swim in the ocean to find fish. They eat lots of fish, and they get very fat. This helps them to be warm. Listen and practice. Hello, my name is Jerry Peterson. I am from San Diego, California, but I live in New York now. I have an apartment in New York. I am a student at New York University. I'm a student now, but I want to be a teacher. I want to be an English teacher. I am 20 years old and not married. I have a brother. His name is Charlie. He also lives in New York, but he is not a student. 
He is a software designer. He's married. His wife's name is Dana. I see my brother and his wife every week. It's nice to have family here. California is so far away. Listen and practice. The problem with travel. Most of us travel to school or to work every day. Maybe we travel by car to go shopping, or to visit friends, or by plane to go on vacation. Why should we travel less? Cars, planes, buses, and ships all put carbon dioxide into the air. This increases the greenhouse effect and makes our planet warmer. Vehicles also pollute the air with other gases. This makes our cities dirty. Airports are getting very, very busy. About 59,000 international passengers travel through the main airport in New York every day. Listen and practice. It's very difficult to stop traveling, but we can think carefully about the way we travel. For short journeys, we can walk or cycle. This is also better than sitting in a car because exercise is good for us. We can share cars or use public transportation for some journeys. We can try to use small cars because they use less fuel than big ones. We should also reduce the number of vehicles that we make because we use fossil fuels to power the factories where we make the vehicles. Listen and practice. Bacteria. Billions of years ago, bacteria were some of the first living things on Earth. Bacteria are microbes that live everywhere, and there are many different types. Some bacteria make us sick, and some are very useful. Bacteria can eat almost anything. Some feed on waste, some eat oil, and some eat the food between people's teeth. Bacteria are many different shapes. Some are like rods, some are like balls, and some are curly. Some have flagella that look like tiny hairs. These move in different directions to help the bacteria to move around. Bacteria live in places like glaciers, high mountains, and volcanoes, where most other living things can't survive. Listen and practice. Solar energy. Another way to make electricity is to use the heat from the sun. Solar power stations only work well in places where it's very sunny all year long. In many countries, people use solar energy from solar panels to heat water in homes, offices, and swimming pools, and to power watches, calculators, and road signs. In sunny countries, you can cook by using only heat from the sun. All you need is sunshine and a solar panel. Listen and practice. Nuclear energy.
Nuclear power stations make electricity without using fossil fuels. They don't put carbon dioxide into the air, but they produce dangerous radioactive waste. This waste is put underground or under the ocean, where it must stay for thousands of years before it's safe. If there's an accident at a nuclear power station, dangerous radioactive waste can get into the air and travel a long way. In 1986, an accident happened in Chernobyl in Ukraine. People died, and many more people were sick. About 336,000 people had to move away to new homes. Scientists are working hard to make nuclear power stations safer. Listen and practice. Scientists think that Earth's climate is changing, and the weather is getting more extreme. They think that this is happening because Earth is getting warmer. Why is this happening, and how can we keep our planet cool? Earth gets heat from the sun. Some of the heat escapes into space. But some is trapped by a blanket of gases. This keeps Earth warm enough for us to live here, and it's called the greenhouse effect, because it works like a greenhouse. Listen and practice. Global warming. When we use fossil fuels, we make a gas called carbon dioxide. Scientists think that we are putting too much carbon dioxide into the air. The carbon dioxide increases the greenhouse effect, and Earth gets warmer. This is called global warming. Scientists think. That global warming is changing our climate, and making the weather more extreme. This is a problem for people, animals, and plants. Listen and practice. Well, everyone, welcome. I am very happy to have you all in my history class. I think we will all have fun. I believe that you learn best if you enjoy learning. The title of our textbook is "Great Events in World History." That gives you a good idea of our main goal in class. Our aim is to cover the greatest things that happened all over the world. Imagine the building of Egypt's pyramids, the glory of Rome. The American Revolution, the rise of the internet. Listen and practice. Cleaner cars. Engineers are investigating how to make car engines cleaner. So that they won't damage our planet so much. Instead of using gasoline, some cars use electricity, and others use a mixture of gasoline and electricity. Some cars use fuels made from plants. These biofuels can be made from nuts, corn, and other plants. There are also a few cars that use electricity made from solar energy. Maybe in the future, all cars will be powered in these ways. Listen and practice.
animals in danger. Every animal has a special place to live called its habitat, but people are destroying many of these important habitats. When we cut down the rainforest trees, we destroy the habitat of gorillas and tigers and hundreds of smaller animals. Global warming is also a problem for animals. For example, if too much ice at the North Pole melts, polar bears will lose their habitat. Hunters kill some animals for money. Many elephants were hunted because people could sell their ivory tusks for a lot of money. Now, this has stopped. But all around the world, hundreds of different types of animal, from insects to tigers, are disappearing because of lost habitats or hunting. Pollution is also a huge problem for animals. Listen and practice. Cleaner planes. Engineers are trying to make plane engines that don't pollute the air, but it's very difficult. They know that lighter planes with bigger wings use less fuel. They are designing better planes all the time. Some planes can fly using biofuels, but many people think it's wrong to grow plants for planes. They say that we need the land to grow food for people. What do you think? A few planes are already powered by solar energy, but they don't have any space for passengers. Listen and practice. Too many plastic bags. We throw away more plastic bags than anything else. Plastic bags are a huge problem for our planet. It's difficult to recycle them. You can use a plastic bag for only five minutes but it can take 500 years to decompose. People throw away too many plastic bags, and this pollutes our cities, countryside, and oceans. Many fish, birds, and other animals die if they eat a plastic bag, because then they can't breathe or eat food. Try to use plastic bags lots of times, or use a bag that is made of a natural material instead. Listen and practice. Without plants, we would have nothing to eat. We also use plants to make clothes, homes, and medicines. Plants take carbon dioxide from the air, and they give us oxygen to breathe, too. Plants are really important. All living things are part of food chains. Plants are at the start of all food chains because plants only need sunlight, water, and carbon dioxide from the air to make their food. Animals need to eat plants, or they eat other animals that eat plants. So we all need plants.
Listen and practice. Food and drink. Plants give us food like fruit, vegetables, and rice. We eat fruit and vegetables because they contain vitamins that keep us healthy. Cereal crops, like wheat and corn, give us flour to make bread. Many drinks, like tea, coffee, and chocolate, come from plants. We also use some plants as herbs or spices to make our food taste good. We use olive trees in many ways. We can eat the fruit and use oil made from the fruit for cooking. The oil is also good for our hair and skin. Listen and practice. Medicines. For thousands of years, people have used plants as medicines. Many modern medicines are made from chemicals that were first found in plants. Many plants that are used for medicines grow in rainforests. For example, the rosy periwinkle from Madagascar contains chemicals that can treat two types of cancer. Listen and practice. Plants in danger. Plants need clean air and water to grow. Polluted air and water can damage them. Global warming is also a problem. Some plants cannot grow in their usual place if the temperature gets too high or if there is extreme weather, like floods. We are using too many trees. Big international companies cut down huge numbers of trees for wood to make furniture or paper. Sometimes they cut down trees in rainforests to make space to grow crops or to raise cattle so that they can produce cheap food like palm oil and hamburgers. Listen and practice. What can we do? If we keep our planet clean and use fewer fossil fuels to reduce global warming, we will save millions of plants. We must also use fewer trees we can use less paper and recycle it. Some charities collect money to buy trees to keep them safe. We can pay people to care for trees and use them in different ways to make money. For example, farmers can sell nuts from their trees. We must stop companies destroying rainforests to bring us cheap food. We can plant new trees. Countries and big companies can also replace the trees that they use. Finland and Canada already do this. Listen and practice. We need animals. Earth is home to many amazing animals. 
from tiny bacteria that we can't even see to huge whales. We share our planet with all these other animals. Animals help us in many different ways, and we must protect them. Many animals, like cows, sheep, and chickens, are raised for food. Farmers raise them to give us meat, cheese, eggs, and milk. In the ocean, there are fish farms where large numbers of fish are raised for food. We use animals to give us leather, wool, and feathers. Around the world, animals are also used to help us with work. They carry people and crops, and they help with farm work. Listen and practice. Useful mini beasts. Insects like beetles, flies, and ants help the planet too. Some insects carry pollen from flower to flower. Many flowers need pollen from another flower to make seeds. Bees fly from flower to flower to get nectar to make honey. People collect the honey and enjoy eating it. Many insects are useful because they eat waste, and worms help us by making compost and keeping the soil healthy. Listen and practice. Being active is very important, but do you know why? There are many benefits to exercise. It is good for your mind and body in many ways. Exercise makes your body stronger. You need a strong body so you don't get sick easily. Exercise is good for your heart. Your heart pumps blood around your body. The more you exercise, the stronger your heart is. Exercise helps you keep a healthy weight. A healthy weight is important so you don't get sick. Exercise helps your brain work better. When you exercise, more blood goes through your brain. The more blood that goes through your brain, the better your memory gets. Exercise makes you happier. Exercise is a great way to reduce stress. It gives you more energy to do things that make you happy. The more things you do, the better you sleep. There is a kind of exercise out there for everyone. You can do it alone or with others. You can ride your bike or climb the stairs. You can learn a new team sport. You will meet people and make friends. Exercise makes you strong, healthy, and happy. And it's fun to exercise. So don't forget to exercise. Listen and practice. Pollution makes land, air, and water dirty. Factories make pollution, and landfills make pollution too. Polluted air and water can make people and animals sick. People throw some waste onto the ground or into rivers. This waste makes more pollution and more problems. Polluted rivers can kill the plants and animals that live there. All around the world, people make lots of new things every day. We need materials like paper and plastic to make these things. Paper is made from trees. Plastic 
is usually made from oil. Many factories use oil for the energy that they need to make machines work, or to make things very hot. Earth gives us trees and oil. We need to use them carefully so that we can have them in the future. We are making too many new things and using too many materials. We are also making too much waste. We can't live like this forever. We are making too many problems for Earth. Listen and practice. Food waste. We all make a lot of waste. There's waste from our homes, factories, offices, and schools. We recycle a lot of our waste materials, but we should recycle more. What do you do with the food that you don't eat? In some countries, people throw away billions of metric tons of food waste every year. Some of it is food that we can't eat, like banana skins and eggshells, but some of it is good food. Most of it goes to landfills. In landfills, there's no air under the ground. So, food decomposes very slowly. We can make compost with some of our food waste. We can do this at home. The compost helps plants to grow in the garden. In a compost bin, worms eat the waste and make it into compost. In many places, people collect food waste from homes, stores, and restaurants. Machines called biodigesters use the food waste to make compost for farms. When the food decomposes, it makes a gas. People can use this gas to cook with or to make electricity. We can reduce waste and save money when we only buy food that we need. We should think carefully about what food we need to buy. So that we don't waste it. Listen and practice. Animals in danger. Every animal has a special place to live, called its habitat. But people are destroying many of these important habitats. When we cut down the rainforest trees, we destroy the habitat of gorillas and tigers, and hundreds of smaller animals. Global warming is also a problem for animals. For example, if too much ice at the North Pole melts, polar bears will lose their habitat. Hunters kill some animals for money. Many elephants were hunted because people could sell their ivory tusks for a lot of money. Now this has stopped, but all around the world, hundreds of different types of animal, from insects to tigers, are disappearing because of lost habitats or hunting. Pollution is also a huge problem for animals. Listen and practice. Healthy habits. Good habits are important for living a healthy life. Bad habits are difficult to break, so it's important to live a life of good, healthy habits. 
That's why I have made a list of healthy habits and how to keep them. Habit 1 Eat healthy. How? Eat a variety of fruit and vegetables and drink water often. Eat junk food like chips and cookies only occasionally. Habit 2 Always be polite and kind. How? I say please and thank you frequently, and I always share with my friends. I help people when they need help before they ask. Habit 3 Stay active and exercise often. How? I walk to school and I take the stairs. I play outside with my friends. I never play video games for more than one hour. Habit 4 Take good care of my teeth. How? I brush and floss my teeth every night, and I visit the dentist regularly. Habit 5 Do the sleeve sneeze when you've caught a cold. How? I always sneeze into the inside of my elbow. Do not spread germs to others. With these good habits, it's easy to stay healthy. Listen and practice. Every country has typical dishes that are popular with local people. These dishes are often made in a traditional way with special ingredients. Couscous is one of the most typical foods in Morocco. It's made from wheat. The couscous grains are small when they are dry. Then they get bigger when they are cooked with water. Moroccans often eat couscous with meat and vegetable dishes. What types of dishes are typical in your country? Listen and practice. Another typical food in Morocco is tagine. It's a hot dish made with vegetables and meat or seafood. People also add nuts and dried fruit like raisins. They cook the tagine very slowly in a tagine pot. When it's ready, they serve it with fresh bread. It's delicious. Listen and practice. Travel more, spend less. This was a great year for traveling. I took trips to France, Australia, and Turkey. I spent almost a month in each country. Besides the cost of transportation, I only spent $600 total for all three trips. How? Well, I didn't stay in any hotels, and I didn't eat in expensive restaurants. It's easy when you know the secrets to cheap travel. For my first trip, I went on a working holiday in France. Every year, farmers in France hire travelers to come and work on their farms. I slept at a farm for free, and every weekend, I traveled around the country. During the week, however, I picked fruit for eight hours a day, five days a week. Picking fruit isn't easy, and sometimes it didn't feel like I was on vacation. But I met a lot of great people, and I ate a lot of delicious food at the farm. For my next trip, I went backpacking in Australia. 
During the day, I went hiking, and each night I slept in my tent. Carrying a backpack and tent all day can be tiring. However, the mountains and beaches were so beautiful that I didn't think about my heavy backpack. Finally, in Turkey, I tried couch surfing. To couch surf, you join a special online network. This network connects travelers with hosts in different countries. Hosts invite travelers to sleep in their home instead of spending money on a hotel. You sleep in a bed or even on a couch. That's why people call it couch surfing. Couch surfing is a great way to meet people when you travel. All my hosts were really nice, but one guy had two big dogs and they were noisy. It was hard to sleep there. I have to go for now. Two couch surfers from Canada are coming in an hour, and I need to clean my house. Happy travels! Listen and practice. You're not going to believe this. But I missed it. I left really early so I wouldn't be late, but I wrote the address down wrong and I couldn't find the office. I was so nervous about the interview that I forgot my phone, too, so I couldn't call them and ask for directions. I was so mad at myself. I really wanted that job. Listen and practice. I was so disappointed, and so was my niece. I had flowers and a card to give her, and I really wanted to be there for her special day. But I ran out of gas on my way to the school. Can you believe that? I made it to her graduation party later that evening, but I really wanted to make it to the ceremony. Listen. And practice. I'm glad I decided to study there. My Spanish is much better now. It's pretty expensive, but the facilities are very good. They have a great computer lab, and there's free Wi Fi all over campus. It's much better than the school I was going to last year. Listen and practice. Mukesh Ambani, a businessman in India, is the owner of the most expensive house in the world. Ambani's dream house is 27 stories high, so it has room for everything his family needs and wants. Mr. Ambani owns a lot of cars. So the first six floors of his house are just for cars. Another floor of the house has a movie theater with seats for 50 people. Two floors of the house are for a health center with a gym and a swimming pool. Another floor is for guests of the Ambani family. The four floors at the top of the building are just for the Ambani family. From there, they have a view of the Arabian Sea.